based on based on being in practice spaces every practice space is all metal bands and he was you know he's inexperienced with going to practice spaces and he was trying to like argue with me about you know how do I arrive at that you know realization that most bands are metal bands just like dude you just don't know <laughs> you just never been to a practice space they're all the same I don't know, but it's it's also weird that at practice spaces, you, most of the bands are metal, but also most of them just completely suck. Like they're they're in there practicing like the same lick fifty times in a row. But you know you got to admire that kind of determination. <laughs> it's like... This is Ringo Death Star signing off from Nylon TV. Like uh, for the last ten years, I've been focusing only on music, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes, when I'm home from touring and I have to have a day job, it's just been by default, you know, working some stupid retail job. But you know, I like the idea of local farms being able to supply food for a local town, you know, instead of getting your food from way far away, you know. I feel like people need to know where their food comes from. They need to know how to grow it. You know, it's just like fundamental things that have been lost in the last hundred years. You know, so that's why you know like when I'm here, I feel like I need to I need to figure out some way to make a difference in that in that realm instead of just working at some retail job making money for some corporate entity that I don't care about. <laughs> yeah. But it it all when you don't have any experience, it's just kind of like where do you start? So I might start volunteering at Johnson's Backyard Garden or something. They pay you in vegetables at the end of the work day or whatever. You just have to like show up in the morning at the crack of dawn and then be willing to work hard, you know. Other than that, we're uh, figuring out what we're going to do as a band next. You know, we're probably going to go to Japan in April again, you know. And, uh, you know, we, try, we, we like to do it all at once. So we started in Brazil, then Japan, and then a, a month in the States, and that was all great. Like, this was our best U.S. tour ever. Okay. But, you know, we were sleeping on floors and driving ourselves, and we profited more than the last time, you know, because we didn't spend a dime on hotels. But as far as uh, in the States go, it's, it's L.A., Chicago, Seattle, and New York. And, uh, you know, that it, when you tour, it's like, how do you get there when you're from Texas, when you're a million miles from anywhere? <laughs> so it's like you have to, you have to play every day. Yeah. And in order to do that, you have to play far enough, or you know, cities close enough in between. So you're going to play a lot of shows that there's like 15 people there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, pe people... People are surprised when you tell them, yeah, I'm in this band and then I have to have like two jobs when I yeah. come at home. <laughs> by, the, by the time Ringo Death Star began, I, I had already been married, you know, my, and I have pets and I don't have any kids, but, you know, it, it, I'm not, I wasn't in a place where I could just like live on a couch and live on the road, yeah. which is a way to do it and that, that would facilitate uh, the ability to be flexible and not have to worry about money. I mean, if you could just live at your parents' house when you're at home, yeah, and yeah. the goal would be to just be on the road most of the year. For a few weeks here and there. <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or, you know, instead of going home for that week, you know, you're off of tour for two weeks, you can just go couch surf in New York City and, right. you know, make all these friends there. I mean, you know, that that's like one of the hubs of success for 
for bands, you know, obviously like a lot of stuff's coming out of there. And it was actually a lot easier to get a following in New York than we thought it would be. Like our first show there, you know, there was people there. <laughs> you know, Where do you guys think you do the best? Uh, Japan's definitely the best. Our band hasn't ever really stood for any cause or anything, but maybe it's time to be like, you know, have a strong anti-corporate stance for something. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, that's, maybe this is our chance to, to really get people to realize what's actually going on. Because like to, to people that aren't in bands, they don't have a clue. You know, they just think that bands make money from touring and that they should just shut up about digital right. downloads happening like you got to regroup and figure out how to, to make a living being a musician without being because now it's like the only way independent musicians can make any substantial amount of money is to be like having songs and movies or commercials would you say no to that if someone asked uh, I mean I've been trying to do it uh, and and having no success so at this point maybe maybe I would say no I mean it's uh, it's just making me think really hard about like what am I actually doing this for?
I know we we used to have four, now we're three. <laughs> it was just because we we just when when the other guy left, it was like we really want to try and find someone at this point, you know, teach them all the songs. I don't know. That that's the hardest thing about being in a band is when you start a band, finding the people to play with. If you don't, if it's not just like some friends you've already had. Like, how do you find who to play with? And that's what I went through for like two years before I met Alex. Yeah, most of the time in Ringo Death Star, there has been at least one person that I've known from my hometown because a bunch of people moved here, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it was easy, you know, at, at first it was the three of us, it was me these other two dudes that moved here and uh, they quit and then this other chick that moved here she was a drummer and then, and then at that point I started getting people from other bands and then she quit and then, or, and then, or I kicked her out or something I can't remember <laughs> and then you know then at that point it was just me and a bunch of people that I had just met from going to shows and, and that's when the real fun began it was just like a revolving door of people and uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think I could do that again. <laughs> so is it, do you feel like it's just like your thing or is it now? Not anymore. I mean, it, sort of feels it like was, it's but uh, you know, since, since we've been, me and Alex and Daniel have been together. Daniel joined in 2008. So, but probably for the past two years, it's just been, you know, just us doing it more together, you know. I've always thought about it as like I, I wasn't around to see like my bloody Valentine when they first started. I mean obviously they've they're around now. Yeah. And I've seen them now, which I never I never thought that I would be able to do that back when I started this band cuz there was they weren't together again. And uh, no one knew they were going to be getting together again. This was like 2 years before they got back together and I I just thought, I can't ever see my bloody Valentine, so I'm gonna play music like that so I can kind of experience something like that. That's kind of like a driving factor in a lot of bands, you know, and people complain that bands are just ripping off other bands, but, you know, so what in a way, you gotta say so what, because it's what's happening right now that is important to a lot of people. It's like, I wanna go. I want to play this music right now. I want to go see a show like this right now. I want to hear this right now. I'm sick of just reading about it. I'm sick of listening to these old CDs or records, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's like we just we just wanted to have fun. But now it's like I want to I want to I want to keep having I'm not I'm not saying I want to f find a way to do something new that's going to change the face of music. I'm not I'm not out to do that. It's just like I'm kind of getting tired of uh, of like shoegaze. I would like to get more aggressive, just more. But I'm, I need to get over my shyness. That's why. I, that's why I like doing my bloody Valentine's type stuff and Jesus and Mary Chain type stuff was easy and felt natural for me because I can't. I'm not a very good singer, and that was like I I could sing like that, no problem. <laughs> I can't sing like. Fugazi, which, you know, I, I always loved Fugazi. In, in the previous bands, I was trying to write music like Fugazi. I, I played drums in those bands, though. I mean, I, I can't sing like that, no way. So, and this, this is something that I feel like, this is an issue that I feel like people on all, all sides of the coin, left, right, middle, whatever, can agree on. Uh, let's see what the name of this law is. The Animal and Ecological Terrorism Act. It's like some types of legislation that will make it uh, a form of terrorism to infiltrate factory farms and research facilities, take pictures and video to try and expose the cruelty. The, but this legislation was written by the lawyers of these corporations. So there you go, right there. Who doesn't want you to know What's that they're kicking chickens and pigs around in there and that's what you're eating? The corporations. And, you know, in South Carolina, like as we speak, there are corporations, the agricultural 
corporations are trying to make raw milk illegal, which is illegal in most states. This is one of the last states that's legal. And, you know, I thought this was a free country, but you can't even buy raw milk. I mean, what the hell is this world coming to? <laughs> They're all over the country. There's people that have been fined by neighborhood associations for having a garden in their front yard. You know, they've been forced to uproot their gardens. I mean, this is what we're coming to. We're supposed to be sustainable, but we can't even grow our own food. We're supposed to be sustainable, but we can't even buy raw milk that hasn't been treated with any chemicals that were made in huge factories. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm not even vegan. I'm not even advocating vegetarianism or veganism. I'm saying, like, you know, the, the reason that you need, like, pesticides on all these foods is because when you grow one crop in one area, in a huge area, and you only have one thing, you're gonna get pests and bacteria because it's not natural. Got to, got to uh, somehow raise awareness on that, you know, without trying to. I don't want to be a political bit because to me this stuff isn't politics. It's corporations telling you what you can and can't do. I feel like I've gone off in a big non-musical tangent, but to get back to what we're doing as a band right now, 